Today we're talking about the huge asterisk in equal rights law, the ministerial exemption. This rule says that religious institutions without repercussion can fire employees who aren't as holy as thou. I'm relieved to report that the discrimination in this case is equally offensive to the entire family. One religion teacher alleges disability discrimination because her contract was not extended after she was diagnosed with cancer, and the other religious teacher alleges age discrimination as the reason for her termination. Now don't worry, it's not like Jesus was a big fan of protecting the sick and the elderly. It may seem obvious, but what's the problem here? Well, the question today is whether these religious teachers even have the right to file a discrimination suit in the first place. If these teachers were ministers, they would definitely not have the right to sue, because religious institutions can discriminate without legal repercussions regarding who they hire and fire as ministers. Separation of church and state cuts both ways. Problem is, they weren't ministers, but rather religious teachers at a religious school. So are religious teachers at a religious school close enough to ministers to not have legal protections against discrimination? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. This case was pretty simple and most people anticipated the outcome. In fact, it was a bit controversial that the ruling was 7-2 instead of 9-0. What made this case interesting though was it was the first time the Supreme Court had to define a minister under this law. During oral arguments, Justice Elena Kagan, who eventually voted against the teachers, was all over this line of questioning. Justice Elena Kagan fired a series of hypotheticals, ranging from a math teacher who teaches something about Judaism for 10 minutes a week, to a nurse at a Catholic hospital who prays with sick patients, and an employee at a soup kitchen who leads grace before meals. What's the connection between the employees who would or would not fall under the exemption? Who could have guessed it would be this hard to spot the minister? So is anyone who's tangentially related to religion suddenly not protected by any wrongful termination laws? Your Honor, she said God damn it in the break room, and commanding your God to damn something makes you enough of a minister for me to, without repercussion, fire them for turning 26. I'll make sure to avoid preaching to the choir on this show. So where's the line? Well, to understand that, we need to go back to the decision written by Justice Alito. First, the ministerial exemption does not just apply to people holding the job title of minister. Man, I thought the boss really hated me, but he just promoted me to minister. Oh, uh, we work in corporate finance. Another problem he indicates is that minister is not a position in many non-Christian religions. Well, he can sue you for firing him unconstitutionally because he's a rabbi. This still brings us back to the unanswered question of what is, legally speaking, a minister? This confusion was key to the teacher's case, who argued that the ambiguity in the language of the ministerial exemption meant that it would be unfair to apply it to people outside of explicitly ministerial positions until we figured out what we were talking about. Alito countered that point by saying that the lower courts have been applying the exemption for many years without such a formula. Yeah, we've been subjectively applying this ambiguous exemption for years. Why stop now? Instead of coming up with such a formula, Alito seemed to take the, eh, if it quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, approach to ministerial labeling. In a country with the religious diversity of the United States, judges cannot be expected to have a complete understanding and appreciation of the role played by every person who performs a particular role in every religious tradition. Let me buy these Scientology textbooks to see if you, as a person who measures the frozen thedons of Xenu to test people's purity, qualify as a minister. Instead, Alito ruled that it is enough in a case like this to say that a school with a religious mission entrusts a teacher with the responsibility of educating and forming students in the faith. Judicial intervention into disputes between the school and the teacher threatens the school's independence in a way that the First Amendment does not allow. So that's the opinion of the court. 
Clarence Thomas wrote a concurring side opinion, not the court opinion, just an op-ed because he had some thoughts of his own, that was joined by Neil Gorsuch. This opinion went even further. It said that literally any employee in a religious institution whose position the institution described as ministerial, without even court verification of what his position was, should not have the court discrimination protection because the government does not have the right to even question those ministerial labels. Yeah, our IT guy was ministerial. He sure was breachy. Justice Sotomayor and Ginsburg dissented, worrying that such a vaguely defined standard could open up teachers to being fired for any reason, even though they taught primarily secular subjects, lacked substantial religious titles and training, and were not even required to be Catholic. Similarly, they warned that this religious exemption could lead to the loss of judicial protection for quite a few non-teaching positions, including countless coaches, camp counselors, nurses, social service workers, in-house lawyers, media relations personnel, and many other people who work for religious institutions. So there you have it. If the religious institution could possibly describe your position as ministerial, well then don't hold your breath for the courts to bring about your judgment day. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the Supreme Court's legal arguments, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Click here for a playlist of my Supreme Court coverage, and make sure you give me a like if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.